nothing compares to this What a wonderful name it is one of us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
So it's so good again today that I could be together to gather around God's Word. Thank the Lord again for keeping us through another week. He has been so gracious and so wonderful. Every day that we've come to deliver the Word of God here since the lockdown, we've had sunshine. And I just want to thank God because, you know, as I think about the sunshine, I think about the sun of righteousness that's always shining, always there for us, always making provision for us. And even before we have a circumstance or a situation, he's already gone before us and made provision. And also we're reminded that we're also that he said that when we pray, he always does super abundantly more than we ask or think. I thank God for his faithfulness for even when we don't even pray, just to think sometimes just he gives us the desires of our heart. And even when we're not thinking about certain things, he's thinking about everything that concerns us. And so today I want to spend time just looking at the faithfulness of God. I've just been reflecting back and thinking, you know, in all that's been happening, in all the things that we've been hearing, all the stuff that's coming through the media to bring fear and to bring discouragement and bring hopelessness, a lot of stuff. People are so confused. I want to encourage you that if you know the Lord Jesus Christ and you know anything about him, you will know that our God is faithful. And so I want to remind us today of that. In 1 Peter 4, 19, it says this, Therefore, let those who suffer according to the will of God commit their souls to him in doing good as to a faithful creator. Therefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing as unto a faithful creator. I want you to hold on to that. I want you to remember the term, a faithful creator. And then it says in Psalms 37, verse 3, we read, a well-known psalm here, as we're reading, and it's a psalm of great encouragement. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. So we have these two phrases which are concerning our God. Peter's saying here, he's speaking about a faithful creator. And David encourages to feed on his faithfulness. Now, when I think about faithfulness today, it's a concept uh, we'll say really in our world today that people are not really thinking about. It's not, faithfulness is not something you hear much about in people's conversation. Uh, in, in fact, unfaithfulness is one of the uh, outstanding sins of today. And we can see unfaithfulness all around us. Uh, many of us who have been involved in business, or if you're in business right now, you'll realize the disloyalty and the unfaithfulness is everywhere. And even when we think about what's happening now and the situation we're in, there are lots of things you can see that uh, lots of mistrust, uh, lots of disloyalty, uh, and there's unfairness going on in many areas but also we see it in the social realm. And especially we see it in, our, in the marital uh, situations today. In that realm of marriage, we see so many uh, that are getting caught up. There's much infidelity and there's a lot of unfaithfulness. So we see it everywhere. Sadly to say, in many areas, even for those of us who are Christians, we can see unfaithfulness in areas, even um, from those who are uh, called to lead and called to teach the word of God. And they made a promise to God to carry out his word and their uh, commitment to him, you know, but now they're moving away from the, the doctrines of the word of God and the counsel of God. And we find sometimes that when we get a position or when, we, or when the world's pressure comes upon us sometimes, even within the church, uh, many are failing to walk the paths of righteousness. Um, and so therefore, really, uh, theoretically, people become unfaithful to the word of God. Unfaithfulness can be found in so many different spheres of life. And if we're honest with ourselves, as we stand before the Lord, we can see sometimes even unfaithfulness in ourselves. And so we have to ask the Lord that he would help us because many times in people's transactions, 
in the, in, in, in the words that we speak without even realizing, speaking hastily, we can become unfaithful to the things of God and the ways of God. But more severely and seriously in our relationships with the Lord Jesus Christ himself. And I believe that uh, as we look at our God and look at his faithfulness, it will help us to be able to realign and recalibrate, as I've been using these words continually, our lives to understand uh, how God is so faithful to us and it can help us address any areas of unfaithfulness in our life. In Deuteronomy 7, verse 9, it says this, Therefore know that the Lord your God, he is God, the faithful God. Therefore know that the Lord your God, he is God, the faithful God. And you know, I, when I think back, I think of some of the songs that really come, uh, come up in my heart sometimes. And we used to sing, and it, there's, a, there's an old chorus they used to sing when I was a uh, young man in church. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and what he has done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah, thank God for saving me. In uh, Deuteronomy 32, verse 4, and this is from the New Living Translation, it says this, He is the rock. His deeds are perfect. Everything he does is just and fair. He is a faithful God who does no wrong. How just and upright he is. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Father. And in Psalm 33, verse 4, For the word of the Lord is right and true. He is faithful in all he does. That's encouraging. That's wonderful for us to know that the God that we serve will never let us down. He is faithful to his word and he's faithful to his truth. Psalms 86 verse 15. But you, O Lord, are a God full of compassion and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in mercy and truth. The NIV puts it this way. But you, O Lord, are a compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness. I thank God today for that, uh, that he's, he's, he's slow to anger and he's abounding in love and faithfulness. And when we think about the world we're in, when we think about sin, when we think about all the things that we know have been going on around us that are contrary to God's way and plan, we thank God that he remains faithful and loving towards us. In Psalms 117 from the New King James Version, it says this, for his, for his merciful kindness is great towards us and the truth of the Lord endures forever. I don't often use the NIV, but I was looking at the context of these verses, looking into the depth of this faithfulness of God. And in, in, in NIV, it says this, for great is his love towards us and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Oh, I just thank the Lord. And I want to encourage anyone that's listened to me right now. I'm not just here saying these words or, or just preaching for the sake of preaching, I know without a shadow of doubt that our God is faithful. And when I reflect back I, and, and I read these verses, I think, Father, I thank you that your faithfulness endures forever. And when I think back and I'm, I'm being, I've been reflecting back, I've just faced another milestone in my life uh, this week. And I've just been reflecting back and thinking this time last year, uh, I was celebrating a, another birthday but you know, I, I was, my body was just being, coming back into, to be able to function at 100%. And uh, I was thinking, you know, that without those, you know my testimony, but without any real warrant, warrant of great pain or, or anything that suddenly I was in that situation. And I, I cannot, I bring it up now and then, I cannot forget the time when I walked into the hospital, or walked into the hospital and within 15 minutes, a doctor came to see me, and when they had done the x-rays, the first thing they said to me is, Mr. Greenwich, you are critical, 
and you're at the point of death and we will try to see if we can save you, but you would have to sign these papers. And you know, all I could do was rest in the arms of a faithful God, knowing that he remains faithful and endures forever. And I want to say this right now. The reason I brought that up is because many of you who are listening to me have found yourself in a situation over this whole COVID-19 situation where you could never have planned for it. You wouldn't know what was going to happen next. There are those of you that had uh, plans to do certain things at this time, and all those plans had to be changed. There are those of you right now that even financially in different areas, uh, you, you, you may seem under such pressure and wonder what you're going to do next. I want you to know, if you're a child of God and your faith and your trust in God, even when we are not faithful, he remains faithful. His faithfulness endures forever. I want to bring it across. I want to say this to everyone who hears my voice today. You are not going to go under for, coming, for going over. Long before anything happened that you knew about that would seem a negative, God had already made provision for you and you are coming out on top. And what you need to do is to recognize the faithfulness of God, begin to worship him, begin to praise him, begin to adore him, and let him get into your situation. And I want to tell you something right now. Any situation God gets into, transformation comes. And I was thinking about our Bible reading yesterday, where, you know, even I see that even David, he was so eager to get the ark back and wanted to bring it back his, you know, Oh, his own way, but in his impulsiveness and, and, and impetuousness, really, to get it back, to get God's presence back, he brought it back the wrong way. But you know what? There was a right way. I believe even in the reading, we heard about the sons of Issachar who understood the times. They understood the times because they, began, they understood the God behind the times. God is outside of time, but in our lives, he comes into time, and that which was outside of time, he can bring change into that which is limited to time. And so I thank God because of his faithfulness. 2 Timothy 2.13, if we are faithless, he will remain faithful for he cannot deny himself. Hallelujah. That brings home to me the gravity and the truth of the faithless of our God. If we are faithless, even if we don't have faith, he will remain faithful, for he cannot deny himself. Lord, I praise you. And so I want to have a look at the definition of God's faithfulness. God will always do what he has promised to do. God will always do what he's promised to do. God is faithful to his promises. And I have the word of God to back that up. In Joshua chapter 21, verse 45, it says this, Not a word failed of any good thing which the Lord has spoken to the house of Israel. All came to pass. All came to pass. Hallelujah. If you're sitting with someone else right now in your home, you can turn and tell them right now that all that God said will come to pass. Hallelujah. And if you've got no one there with you, you can say it to yourself. Listen, self, you need to know that all God has said is going to come to pass concerning me. Amen. In 1 Kings 8.56, Blessed be the Lord who has given rest to his people Israel according to all that he promised. There has not failed one word of all his good promises, which he promised through his servants. There has not failed one word of all his good promise, which he promised through his servant Moses. Listen to me. God's word has never failed and it's not going to start failing now. Hallelujah. Heaven and earth will pass away, but not one drop or tittle of God's word will in any way pass away. Hallelujah. I thank God today. I want this to be a message of encouragement. 2 Corinthians 1 verse 20. For all the promises of God 
in him are yes and in him, amen, to the glory of God through us. Now, isn't that wonderful? Just think about it. God speaks his word, he releases his word to us, and his promises are yea and amen. They will not fail, but you know, he lets us share in this. He says, to the glory of God through us. Father, thank you that you are going to be glorified through whatever I'm going through, whatever situation it is, Lord, because of your promises over my life, you can thank the Lord right now that he's going to be glorified in and through you. In Jesus' name, amen. Titus 1, verse 1 to 2. Paul, a bondservant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect and the acknowledgement of the truth which accords with godliness, in hope of eternal life, which God, who cannot lie, promised before time began. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The circumstance may come upon you and take you by surprise, but it does not take God by surprise. And before even the world began, God made some promises that no demon, no devil can change. He declared, you are the head and not the tail, and you'll be on top and never beneath. He declared that you are the righteousness of God You've accepted his son, Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. You've been made righteous through the redemptive work that Jesus Christ has paid for you. And today, I want you to know you don't have to worry. Some people may turn around like they've asked the question. Then, Pastor Dennis, why does God sometimes delay the fulfillment of his promises? Here's an answer. He delays or his delay, should I say, and not his denials. His delay is not his denials. Just because God doesn't show up in the time, your time frame does not mean to say that he's denying you from receiving what he's promised. I'll give you an example. In Hebrews 10, 37, it says, For yet a little while, and he who is coming will come and will not tarry. Now, we have to go on to begin to understand that because he says, yet in a little while. Well, a little while to us can be like a day, but to God, one day is like a thousand years. So we say, Father God, in your time, help me to understand, Lord God, that you, your delay is not a denial. And so for that person right now who is, desiring something from God. Wait on him. And when I say wait on him, I use the Hebrew word kwava. Serve him from where you are and he will bring that which you need to pass. In 2 Peter 3, verse 8 and 9, but, beloved, do not forget this one thing, that the Lord, with the Lord, one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Well, Pastor Dennis, yes, I hear that, but why does God sometimes seem to change a promise. I, mean, I hope you can get this. Changing a promise is not breaking a promise. And that may get you a little bit confused because when I'm speaking in the context of God, oftentimes God changed the temporal promise into a spiritual promise. And often God permits, permits his children to suffer the lack of temporal blessing simply in order that he might, we might possess spiritual blessings. So oftentimes, we may want something temporal because we feel in our mind this is going to be good for us. How many people today 
have gone headlong in because they just want to have this or have that. They want this house or they want that material thing or they want a husband or they want a wife and they rush in, they go beyond God's time frame and they rush in to get something and what they saw as a promise, well, God, you promised it, Lord God, you give me a house. Lord, you promise this. Lord, you promise you'll give me a partner in life and we go, we go ahead of God. You need to understand that you know, so it's not that God changes his promises, but sometimes what he does is that he, he changes things in light of our concept of what we feel the promise should be. Listen to me. Our ways, not his ways, neither our thoughts, his thoughts. His ways are higher than our ways and his thoughts are higher, higher than ours. So we ask God, Lord, Will you help me? And I can show you an example here in Philippians 4, 10 to 13. As I've been reading through these scriptures on the faithfulness, it really touched my heart. Paul says here, But I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at last your care for me has flourished again. Though you surely did care, but you lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. I know how to be a base and I know how to abound. Everywhere in all things, I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me and my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Paul, in Philippians 1, writing this letter, was in prison. And yet still, in, when you go into chapter 1, what we have, we have chapters and we see in the first part of the letter, Paul says in that letter, even when they came in, they said to him, look, there are those out there preaching another gospel and whatever. Paul said, don't worry about that. I just thank God the gospel's being preached. He just trusted God to be a faithful God and whatever's been done in the name of Jesus, God can sort it all out. And I want to say that to you right now. We live in a world of broken promises. Marriages vows have been broken. Politicians break their promises. But you know, God never will break his promises. And so you can just encourage yourself today. I want you to be encouraged. If you're feeling discouraged about any situation, I want you to remember God's faithfulness. In Lamentations 22 to 23, it says this, because the Lord's great love because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Don't let the new blessings, the new blessings that have for you, God has for you, do not let God's compassion that has been allotted to your life to demonstrate his faithfulness, pass you by. New morning, new faithfulness, new grace come in your way in Jesus' name. You know, sometimes when we find ourselves in the place when we forget about the faithfulness of God, you can then start to doubt even your salvation. Remember God's faithfulness. You can find yourself in a weak position, in a weak place, and you find yourself thinking contrary to what the word of God is saying. I want to bring you back online today. In John 10, 28, I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. Listen to me. You gave your life to Lord. He will keep you. He will preserve you and no demonic force in whatever form or shape it comes can snatch you out of God's hands. God is a faithful God. In 1 John 5, 13, these things have, I have written to you who believe 
in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. Let me read it one more time for everyone who calls yourself a believer in Jesus Christ, a committed Christian. These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may continue, hallelujah, to believe in the name of the Son of God. Let me back that up with 1 Corinthians 1, 8 and 9. And I take this in the NIV because I want just to bring this across. He will keep you strong to the end. Hallelujah. He will keep you strong to the end so that you will be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God, who has called you into fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, is faithful. Hallelujah. I've got to read that one more time. I'm getting a bit excited up here. He will keep you strong to the end. Hallelujah. Your trouble is, or your circumstance is not going to bring your life to an end. What you're going to do is bring that circumstance, see it through, and you're going to bring that to an end because you are an overcomer. You are triumphant. And God is on your side and all that you're going through is going to work for your good in Jesus' name. And the enemy is going to come. The Bible says that even when Jesus came out of the wilderness, Satan came and tempted him in those three areas, but it says he left for a season. He's always going to be coming back to the true believer to tempt us. But I want to tell you something right now. God is faithful even when we're being tempted. In 2 Thessalonians 3, 3. But the Lord is faithful, who will establish you and guard you from the evil one. Father, I want to thank and praise you right now that you have made provision for all your children to be guarded from the evil one. I thank you right now, Lord God, for those that are listening, that, Father God, are hearing the words of God coming to their ears. Father, I pray right now that all the onslaught of the enemy will be demolished and destroyed and removed in Jesus' name over the minds of your people. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able but with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And I want to just bring home the faithfulness of God to those who are going through something right now and find yourself in this lockdown and maybe you made a choice or, or some decision over something and you're thinking now, if I never made that decision, I would have been better off. You drop all that. Even when we mess up and we consciously know that we did, I want you to know that God does not mess up and he's there for you. You are his child. I am a father and I want to do the best within my power for my daughters. I want to say, and I'm a human being, how much more God? You know, when we mess up, we need to understand that God is there with provision. And it says here in 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. All you've got to do, right, where you are, don't, don't get on no guilt, guilt cloud, right where you are. The best is yet to come. There's a future ahead of you in Jesus Christ, right where you are. If you've got into a mess, if you're into a situation and there seems no way out right now, just take this verse and turn to the Lord and say, Lord, I confess my sinfulness. I confess my sinfulness, Lord, of leading to my own understanding. And Lord, I've got myself in this situation, but I want to thank and praise you that you've made provision for me. And I thank you, Lord, that you are my heavenly Father. What about those of you who find yourself even now in the situation where you find yourself 
you feel that you're in a place where it just seems like that you're in some unequal task. Things are on you right now that you never expected to happen and, and you feel that you can't handle it or you can't bear it. God is faithful. God is faithful. I cannot say it enough. God is faithful. And even if you're facing something and you don't feel you're, you're geared up for it or you can handle it, listen to me, God is right there with you. In Hebrews 10, verse 23, let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. Psalms 89, verse 1, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. And with my mouth, I will make known your faithfulness to all generations. I want to say this right now. Whenever you become aware that there's a situation that you can't handle, come, become aware of the fact that there's one who can handle it, and he's God. And I'll tell you what will happen, even in the midst, as it were, of your prison cell, you will be able to sing. And that's why the psalmist said, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. With my mouth will I make known your faithfulness to all generations. Can you think about Paul and Silas locked up in that prison, in the inner prison? They knew these psalms. They knew where the power was in praise. And they're all chained up, locked in, got a guard there. And all of a sudden at midnight, they begin to praise God. They opened their mouth, they began to praise God. You say, Pastor, this, how do you know they opened their mouth and start to praise God? Because I read the text. I read what it says in the word of God. It says that the other prisoners heard them. They were in there praising God. And while they were praising God, hallelujah, God got in their praise. And I want to tell you something right now. Whatever is material, whatever circumstantial, whatever is anything of any matter. I want to say this right now. When you start to praise and God will come in and demolish it, break it down, destroy it, and he will make a way out for you. Paul and Silas was made free. Their chains bro broke off. Even the jailer, he didn't, he didn't know the God they knew. While they were singing, the jailer was panicking because he was thinking about his future, thinking about him, uh, what will happen to him if these prisoners get away. They just sat there so comfortable. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory to God, glory to God. Let me just tell you something right now. Wherever the enemy has tried to get you tied up and hold you down and bind you and keep you in, 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 in incarcerated, let me tell you something right now. God's going to reverse that. Hallelujah. Oh, from the very place that the enemy has tried to pin you down and make you worthless and make you come to a place where you're dysfunctional, that's the very place where the blessings of the Lord is going to come to your life and not just for you but others because you will be a total example that God can come right into prisons and get prisoners like Joseph and turn them around and mold them to be prime minister. You need to understand God can get people like Jeremiah in a pit to speak, to, to change a nation, to declare words like this in Jeremiah 29 11. I know the thoughts and plans I have for you, said the Lord. Thoughts of peace and of hope to give you a future and an expected end. God is faithful. Glory Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. In Psalms 89 verse 8, O Lord God of hosts, who is mighty like you, hallelujah. O Lord, your faithfulness also surrounds you, hallelujah. I always remember my little niece, Christina, and uh, I think it was uh, years ago, we were, they were having, a, actually it was, a, I think, a, for my 50th birthday, having a celebration, they were coming and, and they were sharing, things were being shared. Uh, and uh, my little, uh, niece, Christina, she's not little no more, she's a young lady now, but she was much younger then. And uh, she was giving a little, little sharing about it. And she started to talk, speak, uh, say something about her auntie. And she loves her auntie, Rosie. But you know, she, uh, she was saying that, you know, even with my auntie Rosie, she was so nice, everything. Um, <clears throat> but she likes to give me, I think it was raspberries or something, and she didn't really like raspberries, and she didn't know how to tell her Auntie Rosie that she don't like ra raspberries, because she liked Auntie Rosie so much. And I never forget what Christina said. She said, you know, I just go with the flow. <laughs> 
And I want to say, you may, that, that, you know, when, when you know that you, you have someone that loves you and, and, and they, you have a, someone that loves you, give you something, you know it's not going to kill you, you know, but it may not be the thing that your appetite wants right now, but you, because you know the love aspect, you go with the flow. Let me say this right now, church. We're going to go with the flow. Even though we're going through circumstances, let's know that our God is faithful. Let's know that he loves us unconditionally. And let's know that he's thinking the best of us all the time. And let's just go with the flow of God in Jesus name God is always faithful and I want to say this faithfulness is not what God does faithfulness is who God is <laughs> hallelujah faithfulness is not just what God does faithfulness is who God is God's faithfulness towards us is not based on our faithfulness towards him Faithfulness flows out of the unchanging nature of the love of God. Oh, oh, love of God, how rich and pure, how measureless and strong. It shall forevermore endure the saints and angels' song. He is forever faithful. And I'm grateful for that, aren't you? When you look at the Old Testament, the people of Israel were consistently turning away from God. Yet God would deliver them over and over again. Even when they complained, God would provide for them and protect them. God is always faithful. So how should we respond to his faithfulness? And I see in these two Psalms, the verses in the Psalms 89, verse 1 and verse 8 that I read, we should sing about God's faithfulness. Hallelujah. We should sing about God's faithfulness knowing that God is always with us, that his love will never leave us, that he is ever faithful to us, is a cause for us to praise him. And Psalms 103 verse 2 says, and I took this from the Living Bible, yes, I will bless the Lord and not forget the glorious things he has done for me. God is faithful and we should sing about it. Every time we come together as a congregation, when we're by ourselves, we should be singing about the goodness of God and his faithfulness because he's done glorious things. You know, the second part says, with my mouth I will make your faithfulness known through all the generations. So we should share God's faithfulness with others. And the best way to show you are grateful for God's faithfulness is to share how faithful he is with others. It's so natural in, this, in the society that we're living in right now for people to speak and to share negative experience or encounters. It's so natural in the, in the environment that we live in for people to complain. But I thank God today that those of us who know the Lord we're in a place where we can say, Lord, you're being good to me. Even when there was not, Lord, money to pay the bills, Lord, you brought that money in. We've got something positive that we can brag about. And when we brag about God and we brag about his faithfulness, other people can be enlightened, encouraged and exhorted. But you know, know that when we share about the faithfulness of God, it's a source of blessing for other people. So we need to submit to God's faithfulness. Who is like our God Almighty, it says here in the psalm. God is surrounded by faithfulness. What wonderful words. And that's true. When we submit our lives to the faithfulness of God, we'll be surrounded by his faithfulness. Don't resign to your circumstances. Submit to God's faithfulness. Can we trust him today? Yes, we can. It is, go is his word going to fail? No, it's not. His promises never fail. So I thank the Lord so much for the pri privilege of knowing that his 
faithfulness endures forever. But also I thank God today for the privilege of being able to share that with you. Hebrews 10.23 says, Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. You know, let me close with this, the words of this song. There are songs that uh, we sing in church and God's blessed us and we sing of his faithfulness. You know, there's one song whenever, when this song first came out and whenever it sang, I used to always look at my mum because her whole body would express the words that were being sung. And it doesn't matter when I was playing it, if I was playing the piano or playing the accordion or whatever, I'd always look over to my mum when these words were being sung. Faithful one, so unchanging. Ageless one, you're my rock of peace. Lord of all, I depend on you. I call out to you again and again. I call out to you again and again. You are my rock in times of trouble. You lift me up when I fall down. All through the storm, your love is the anchor. My hope is in you and you alone. God bless you. And remember, your God is a faithful God. Amen. So we're so grateful to God that even as we reflected on his faithfulness to us, we, we have a desire and a passion to be faithful to him. And, and the great thing is whether we are faithful or not, he remains faithful. Before we went into this lockdown, I remember our last service that we had as a congregation, I was speaking about raising our hallelujah. We still have our hallelujah. We still have the highest praise. And I thank God today that I could have part of the praise team with us. And so I'm so excited because our God is faithful. Yes, the best is still yet to come. So let's raise our hallelujah. Right in your homes, right where you are, raise your hallelujah. God bless you.
Sing a little loud. 